Welcome back to Gaming with the Guys, Bungled's After Dark. We're back again for episode two. Didn't think we were going to try it again, did you? Yeah, well, we still have a second place winner we got to talk to. So we're dragging back Gaming Jason and Gaming Cody. They're here tonight. And tonight we're going to take some time and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Jason's experience. Get the second place player's view. Now, some of you may have heard. Uh, about his list, uh, but you didn't hear about his matchups and things like that. Uh, but uh, he talked in in depth on it about his list with uh, with Beard over at uh, Roll Dice Eat Rice. That was a couple weeks ago. But we'll we'll see if we could add a little more depth into that conversation. So, gentlemen, how are we doing tonight? I am doing good. I just got done eating dinner, so I'm uh, I, I'm I, I'm focused now. <laughs> focused now. Very good. How about you, uh, Grandmaster Cody? Which apparently <laughs> that's what we're going to have to refer to you as all the time. Uh, always. You'll never live it down now. I'm pretty uh, sure we won't. <laughs> doing well. Had a uh, Grandmaster's dinner consisting of corn dogs. Mmm. That... Dino and dinosaur chicken nuggets, hopefully. <laughs> uh, no, though, I didn't want to cook those. <laughs> No French fries in the air fryer or anything? No, I actually had broccoli salad. Wow. So some healthiness with, you know, the... the balancing it out. A little bit of the corn dog, a little bit of the, the broccoli. Yeah, that sounds that sounds really healthy there, gentlemen. Yeah, the uh, only thing I was missing was the Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> Thought you wanted to sleep sometime tonight. <laughs> Get the hard seltzer Baja Blast or whatever that they're supposed to be coming out with. Uh, the, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, forget they are going to be doing that, aren't they? Yeah, all right. Well, you know that'll, that's... that'll be the ticket to victory next year. <laughs> ticket to victory is is all Mountain Dew. Maybe we'll get you a sponsorship. You could you'd be like a race car driver with all kinds of sponsorships all over your shirt. Yeah, all my armies will be painted red. You know, they go faster then. <laughs> of course, got to put the <laughs> just a red stripe, not all red. Well, that's true. Just have to have the, if you do them all red, they get all bogged down. At least that's what I hear. So, uh, I know you didn't make it out to our weekly gaming session, Cody, because you were like a responsible human being and working and stuff like that. Me and Jason were out there. Everybody else bailed on us. So, you know, I got the delightful experience of, of Jason curb stomping me. Okay. In my defense, it was your dice. It was, I, I, I only was just kind of there with average dice. Your dice did let you down. Yeah, my dice did let me down. I, I won't lie about that. You did, you did pull a little trick out of your hat uh, that yeah. I wasn't expecting. That, that, that wasn't a trick. That, you were there on that interview with, in the lost episode with Beard Minis pu putting Bile of Rajan's breath on a buto. Yeah, well, I didn't know you did it. Otherwise, it probably would have left. So I didn't know you had it out there because I didn't ask what your list was. So, you know, no. that's my fault. My bad. For not not getting that, so yeah, when all of a sudden I got a buto coming eight inches, inches across the board. Oh yeah, the tracks get plus two, so twelve inches across the board on top of Mizuki. Yeah, that was that was loads of laughs. <laughs> Hashtag Silver Moon cheats. I used oh. a Ronin card. <laughs> it was a Ronin card, but it was on a Silver Moon figure, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, Still it just silver. makes it broken. At least I at least I killed Manu before I lost the rest of my army. So, you know, that's good. A little moral victory. Moral victory. I think I probably could have pulled off the 2 0 loss. As it was, he killed me too fast and it would have been a 1 0 in the tournament, but that's all right. You know, at least defended that one idol. So that way he wasn't going to get the full point victory. But, you know, I'm not <laughs> bitter. I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter. Now I know why Ito, no one played Ito at the Grand Champions because Ito is now low tier. I'm making that official. Everyone who's listening, Ito is no longer a competitive faction. Period. End of story. That's just so we get five Ito players <laughs> next year's at Depicon. <laughs> it's true. It's true. How many uh, did you have? I got. I got. I'm going to look at UK Grandmasters, and I bet you there's only going to be like one or two Ito players. Yeah, yeah but current tournament format, maybe because I, I think with the later turn scorings, Ito and Tengu took a hit, especially when they switch that so unless they're going to change the tournament packets up to split it 50 50 and Ito's not like they're not like bottom tier but they they definitely got a hit they, they they definitely got hit with that penalty i feel like yeah uh they did just win the vim tournament what was that like at the turn of the year or something like that maybe december it was a blessed list it was so last year yeah, whatever. Was, <laughs> i mean i mean i, I will admit dissension then Ito. 
And then everything else is like volume. Yeah, but higher. Dissension just won a big tournament too, or placed really high. Well, anybody could place really high as long as they have people playing them. That helps. Uh, fair enough. Nobody, nobody played my beloved Ito. It was sad. I cried. I, I cried a little bit while I was there. I was very shocked. But, you know, again, that just goes to prove that they need to make a good model for it. Or, you know, I could play and not place. Then I'll just reinforce all my arguments that Edo sucks. <laughs> <laughs> New model idea. Kenzo, or not Kenzo, Saburo, but with three heads. Ooh, now that would be cool. As long as he doesn't have hair. No, each one, each one has a new He's hairstyle. Have, so he's yeah. going to have like Goku hairstyle, Vegeta hairstyle, and his whatever his normal samurai hairstyle. They have is. just like, he's going to have, he's going to have the, 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 the poor, the old man's toupee hair like he has now. Then he'll have like the faux hawk. And then, yeah, maybe like full blown Goku Super Saiyan. Super Saiyan hair. That'd be awesome. That's a model I'd buy. <laughs> That's a model a lot of people would buy, probably. <laughs> I don't know what his powers will be, but I don't really care. Because <laughs> he'd be looking awesome. Just think of all the hair opportunities. Or even better, each head is bald, but they have little molded hairs that you could put on them. So, like, as he gets kills and gets more powerful, his hair grows. Oh, Pretty my much. God. That would be so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Epic Tear Saburo. <laughs> That, I would actually paint that up. <laughs> yeah. He's bald, and he's got the toupee. Then he's got full head of hair, maybe dreads. That'd be cool, dreads. Then he's got, you know, the Super Saiyan hair. I don't know what comes after Super Saiyan hair. I don't know. Afro. Uh, no, nah, that would be before Super Saiyan. Probably, no. yeah, yeah. I don't think maybe Super Saiyan hair is, is the, the ultimate hair that Saburo could have. Anyway, just just pitching that out there for some model ideas. That's 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 some great stuff there. I'm gonna have to look up uh, 28 millimeter hair files for <laughs> the 3D printer. <laughs> there you go. Actually, our our miniatures are 32, but if you want to make it look like it's a true fake hair piece, then yeah, you get it at 28. So it just doesn't fit right. Well, exactly. Some have to be too small. Some maybe a little bit too big. Exactly. Oh, Maybe mold some out of Play-Doh just because, you know, there's the really bad ones. <laughs> oh, it's the Edo Hair Club for, for heavy men. I'm not just the president. I'm a member. <laughs> uh, the heavy men hair club. Love it. Heavy men hair club. That's it. <laughs> it's all coming together now. Ah, oh, genius. Genius. So, yeah, that, that was my experience is, is, is losing to Jason again. Um, I, I will admit, yeah, that my that my dice did play a rather large role in that debacle, but that was that was it. and he wasn't even playing with lots of shenanigans. It was just normal shenanigans. It was just lots of big buto meat coming at me. That sounded wrong. Yep, it yeah, was juicy. <laughs> rump, rump, <laughs> roast, rump roast, baby. Rump, rump roast. roast. <laughs> I had to paint that on the back of one of my buto. That would be awesome. Rump roast, sirloin. <laughs> Two words. Oh, <laughs> uh, anyway. Okay, so let's get let's get this back on track. So that that's pretty much it. And then hopefully, well, I know this week we're not gaming, but that's uh, that's because we got it's it's a holiday weekend, so we've got busy plans going on. But soon we'll get some more gaming in on a regular basis, so that way people can experience. Me losing again to, <laughs> you know, the first and second place winners of of Adepticon. And when I win, then I could do the victory dance. I'll do the do do the hat dance right on top of the table like I taught you to when you were young, oh, when you God. won at 40K. Because that's sportsmanship right there. Absolutely. <laughs> Just throw the hat down on the table, jump up on it. You know, that's the way to show who's the victor. Got my oversized sombrero I can bring to gaming from now on. That could that could work. I would think that would be great. All right. So we're here tonight. We're here to talk a bit about Jason's experience. So last week we talked about Cody's victory and his list and his matchups and all the rest of that. This week we're gonna we're gonna delve into what Jason went through, his experience going through it. So um 
you know, we kind of got your feelings going into the tournament, Jace. I, you you had mentioned, you know, this was the first time that you, well, you, you you tell me, what what was it like going into this tournament? What did you do different? You weren't able to play in 2019 at the Grandmasters, but you've been playing in a, we, we've played in a few small tournaments with about six to eight people tournaments and whatnot prior yeah. to this. So how was this different? How is it different preparing for this? Or maybe you just prepared. Yeah, I was going to say, that's the big thing. I actually prepared a list because most tournaments that I show up to, it's, all right, let me flip open the book and see what I want to play. Oh, this seems cool. This seems cool. And then I just build the list day of, usually. Usually I end up breaking theme somewhere. And then mm -hmm. it's like, all right, well, I'm just going to play Order for Battle and I'll do an extra 30 points. And if I need it, I need it. If not, then it, it's whatever. Versus okay. this year, where it was more of a conversation of, all right, why are you playing a theme? Because I didn't really think about because I really want this. All right, can you change that a little bit? Oh, yeah, here, I can play Traveling Show now. So I was going to blame YouTube for everybody's horrific time playing against me at Adepticon. Because me would have been, I would have just been like, all right, I'm going to put a list together a day of and I just run with it because that's typically what I do. And I yeah. end up doing well at most tournaments until the last round. And then I totally drop the ball and then i get like relegated to like mid tier mid table tank it or you meet that one list that uh that was going to be your bane the bad matchup and then you really yeah. didn't have any answers for it no i mean i and you had even said you you this is probably one of those where you you tested it out ahead of time you you practiced with it a bit so you were you were in better shape with it and i will say from when we were doing this the little store tournaments to this you've also put in a lot more games i mean we had mm -hmm. You know, compared to other players, we had gone through COVID and played a lot of games, yes, whether we, whether they were on tape or not. Uh, and you pretty much stuck with with Silver uh, Moon the whole way through. Yeah, I mean, you had a few where you dabbled in ninjas, and you had a couple where you dabbled with uh, the Tanakas, but pretty much you were Silver Moon through and through. So you kind of had them had them down forward and back. So that helped. Oh yeah, definitely. Think. It definitely helps a lot, um, not switching between fractions. And also, I mean, I might have brought the ninjas, but <laughs> I would have brought the ninjas. But the issue is, is that just my ninja collection at this time, I don't or I didn't have two of the more staple ninjas in Ren or Kitsumi. So I noticed a lot with ninjas. I can play around with some of it, but it without at least having one of them unless if I'm trying something completely different, which isn't beyond what I do, mm -hmm. I just knew I wasn't going to have a good time playing with the ninjas. Yeah, ninjas, ninjas are, ninjas are an art form, kind of like silver moon could be a bit of an art form too. I saw Cody getting, getting a, getting that face on him about silver moon. Cody doesn't <laughs> like silver. Moon. Most of our local meta does not like silver moon. No, I, I love silver moon. I just don't play them because Jason plays them. That's true. That is true. I, I'd hate to see you and or Brian playing Silver Moon. That would be a yeah. That's a nightmare. That's We're a nightmare. Kill the meta. Keep, kill the meta. <laughs> I don't know if it'd kill the meta. It would just kill me. I don't well, know. kill our gaming group. It, 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 me, it would, Brian, and Jason were all playing it. Ugh, <sighs> no one would want to play. It's ugly. I, Silver Moon and 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 Jason and I were talking earlier about this. Uh, Silver Moon's one of those that when you look at it, you're like, it doesn't seem like it's going to be overpowering competitive. But at the same time, the control that it brings to bear makes it it, it makes it competitive all the time. Um, you know, so it's it's one of those where you're always going to be in for a fight because it has a trick somewhere that's going to either negate or hamper your best ability. Now, again, uh, the one, the one that we talked about the most that really gives, gives silver moon fits is cult of your eye, which I don't, again, we didn't have a whole lot of cult of your eye show up. I think we had like one or two. I think there was two, two. Yeah. I got the list here and I'm kind of, well, I won't worry about it, but there weren't that many. Uh, and again, I was, that's one of the surprises, which we talked about last week that I, I was, I was amazed that there was no Edo. There wasn't as much cult, which I thought that would happen, but I think it's possible that the, the tweaking of the Yudas dulled a lot of people's, uh, enjoyment 
I'll use or that their word. strategy, maybe. I mean, strategy. Even, even without the, even with the tweak with uh, the with Hikari, I mean, the that the Butalist just in general is still very powerful. Yeah, and I forgot the the, the yeah the one player that had a cult was uh, he was playing the Puppet Master. Uh, he was playing uh, Kato. Kato. Thank you, Kato. Um, and then I don't know if there was anybody else that was playing. Oh, there no, there was. That's right. Or was it the same guy? There was the guy who was playing. Wrath, Wraith, whichever the big one is. Oh yeah, Wraith. Wraith. So yeah, th those were the two lists that were there, uh, and they did not place terribly high. Anyway, so ooh, there goes lights uh, at Jason's house. It's bright. Yeah, now. I was just adjusting that a little bit because <laughs> I was starting. To, I was starting to fade away into obscurity, like I will in the next couple weeks after oh, UK Grandmasters. Oh my gosh, fade! You gotta grab that golden ring, grasp it. I am. I am. All right. Especially so. for someone that hasn't bought Elden Ring. I've been too much playing Arceus <laughs> and playing my Switch, so I, I haven't gotten Elden Ring. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. It, it, it's, it's the new game that everybody's like wasting their time into. No, no, no. I, the only game that I know people waste their time on is a game called Smite. That That's the only thing that I know people <laughs> waste time on. I, I don't know even, what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even realize there were any other games out there other than that. Uh, all right. So let's let's get into your list, Jace. Um, so you know, you're, and, and I'll vouch for you on this one. Your 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 pre pre tournament prep was quite extensive. Now, granted, you you kind of waffled back and forth on lists a little bit, but the variation was still the same. And then you kind of homed in on about a week or two ahead of time. Yeah. Um, so let's take a look at that list. So first, you played Silver Moon, but your theme. Da -da -da -da. We're going to share it here. What was your theme, sir? So my theme was Traveling Show, which is the generic theme that you get out of the box set. So that was, a, I mean, it's kind of interesting that I picked the theme like that. But after going through it, um, it's a pretty wicked theme, all things considered. Being the only thing you're excluded from taking are the roses, which... Mm -hmm. uh, depending on what you're trying to do, I mean, the theme itself almost takes care of not needing to have the roses, depending on what you're trying to do. Okay, yeah, and so what uh, So what appealed to you most about the traveling show theme? Why, why was it the one that you wanted to go to? Because, again, we were talking earlier, and you, you do like doing um, uh, Iron Fist Gumi <laughs> <So, laughs> or I Yokozuna's like... Revenge. You like anything that it has the big hitting meat. Gosh, so, I really got to stop that. <laughs> anyway. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, she said. Um, so, I mean, in this particular, the reason why I picked this one um, over like Iron Fist was one, I can take range um, and I'm not restricted to just only whips in traveling show. So okay. that way, if I wanted to, or well, I did in this case, I could take Wasapu. Um, so that helps. Mm -hmm. um, and then two, because <laughs> I, I'm just in our local playing, I mean, I regularly take three insider information as like a security measure slash being able to mess with people's activations. Mm -hmm. um, so effectively having a model do a key challenge test of six, I can in effect get eight to nine impetuous markers throughout a game so that's usually a lot um especially if you have it at timed at the right time or depending on what model you're throwing it on so okay. most of the times the bullying those one key models or koji's pack if he's out there or something like that so then because koji's packs at least in like our play testing group mm -hmm. um not always in the most prime oper in the prime positions or it's like eh, koji's kind of my pass token so at least i force him to use it early okay Okay. And then getting the luck tokens are awesome. Get well, any, yeah. Anything to get a luck token, especially since they work on the attack rolls, that's like, that saved, that saved my bacon, or that uh, that definitely did a lot more work than I would care to admit, but the fact is, is that they give you the reroll on the attack option, on the attack uh on the attack roll is huge. Well, even on the damage, I mean, well, damage for me, roll. the damage roll is huge right there because I botched so many damage rolls. It's not even funny. Oh, sorry, so, I read the wrong. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I read the wrong part. I meant to. I meant the damage roll for some reason. Thought it was the attack roll, but yeah, the well, it does roll. do the attack roll. I mean, again, it, the, yeah. the, it it hits everything that you really want it to hit, and you know, as a theme, from my standpoint, it 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 does two major things which help a lot. So one, it it has the uh, you know, the impetuous, 
every turn you get one chance to make something impetuous, which can screw with your opponent's order of activation. And it throws out a luck token, which gives reroll, which is, you know, the bread and butter of uh, of Silvermoon. Um, the exclusions, yeah, you'd like to have roses in there, but otherwise it pretty much opens you up to everything else in the faction. So not taking the roses... That's never that that one's one of those where you have to you have to the roses are I want to say delicate having one rose in it would make this stupid. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agreed. I being if I had the option to take probably Subaki or Saki, um, mm. that would definitely be an option for or the one of or them. the new rose that's coming out. The she, new bro. Oh rose. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Her. Well, I was thinking She's for a not broken. Planning. We haven't played with her yet. She can't be broken now. She's in three of my silver moon lists that I've written up. <laughs> I was gonna say she's kind of by default. You kind of need she to could take. kind of by default be in everybody's silver moon list. She's that good, but that's you know. Well, that and the how they priced her for eleven points. I'm like, ooh, that's that that's like I I think that they were trying to give us the low hanging fruit. Uh, low hanging is is right. That's kind of awesome. So, you know, Ito doesn't get anything like that. You have a Koyu Archer, <laughs> Ben. He's been there since the original game. I'm not bitter, though. I'm not bitter at all. It's all good. It's all good. Anyway, so your theme was pretty solid. I'm not going to lie. Uh, and, 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 and I'll say for themes, I like things that give me benefits but have few restrictions on it. And I think Traveling Show really meets that, uh, that criteria. Um, you know, okay. you're excluded from something or, you know, so... Or just permitteds or something along those lines. This 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 what this was this was tailor made for you because it played into your two strengths. So, without any further ado, I will throw up here um, the the first person on your list who was. Do, 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 do. Everybody gets to see my well organized. <laughs> file Folders. of stuff there he is so you oh now my computer's gonna decide to crash that's cool no it didn't you decided to take oda and tantalo oda and tantalo not just oda but both of them so and and then they were with arashi's fan yes oda and tantalo with arashi's fan uh, so why did you decide to, well, uh, I mean, I'll be honest, I've never seen you play Oda by himself, really, but why did you take this pairing? I always, I guess after looking at some things on the Silver Moon board, apparently a lot of people don't like taking the two of them together and they just take Oda by himself. Um, I've always taken them together. Um, mm -hmm. just, I've always liked the option of just having a beat stick, um, and then he also can support people. So he's always been the best of both worlds. Um, but I kind of got the crazy idea for from my precursor list in the winter tournament to Malusi is really good at doing this, but Oda and Tantalo can almost do it better if they're just completely selfish and don't worry about boosting other Butos and just say, I'm going to go run rampant. So that was the reason why I brought him was is one, if I came up against Minimoto, at least I have a, I have an opportunity to try to bust armor. Um, but against anything else, Oda and Tantalo, at least going through the tournament, he actually could bully a lot of people when he wants to be selfish and just keep all his key and just be like, I'm going for this. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, you know, I'm, I'm looking at Oda now. So it's the difference between a 10 point model that um, is a lot of buff. It has, it has idolize. It has, it has rally, you know, is compared to inspiration, which, you know, having idolize would be dumb on a 24 point model because nobody's more expensive than you and your faction, mm -hmm. you know, so it, it, it's a, it's a 15 point or with Arashi's fan, a 17 point investment, but man, it could hit like a Mack truck. I mean, I don't, uh, aside from Oda and Tantalo, does anybody, well, I think you do have a few more br people who bring brutal to the table, right? Uh, Malusi brings brutal and he can get brutal too with crushing blow, but the mm -hmm. other Butos actually don't. Manu doesn't have it, Yokozuna doesn't have it, and Feet and Yama doesn't have it. Okay. And I can't take Lua unless if I take it in Yokozuna's Revenge. Revenge. All right. Um, so yeah, so he's technically my only other Buto that has brutal. Um, the other interesting thing that i remember when i was talking with beard about this he does have rally so he can mm -hmm. cover um lapses if i 
really came up against like cult or a lot of heavy fear factions. Mm -hmm. um, so that way I could rally my guys. Um, so that was also a nice benefit as well. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And then that that's one of those things uh, that 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 actually helps stem a weakness. Now, again, the 10 point Oda model has it, but 10 point Oda is sitting in the back and you're trying to protect him. Whereas Oda and Tantalo eh, kind of trying to protect him, but you're you're actually having him front and center beating face and he draws a heck of a lot of attention. Um, and he can hold his own because and you also have order. Which yeah, isn't bad if you have extra Budo, Budo's. but you didn't have Budo in there. So that's about the only downside, I would say. But otherwise, you know, he 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 can he could dish out the punishment and help your other figures that are around you. So not a bad thing. And I, the virtue token was good because I can get his virtue effects. So yeah, reducing his specials by one was nice. And then there were a couple a cases where I actually effects. where I needed to uh make him immovable. Um so that one was actually a bit bigger than I care to give it credit for it because i keep on forgetting he's only immune to prone he's not immune he's not he's not immovable but at least with the virtue token i can make him immovable right yeah his uh his virtue the reducing the special the cost of special attacks and defenses by one is huge model gains sweep attack one sweep defense one eh, you know i could live without that same thing with gains gain one and throw defense one attack although it definitely if all of a sudden you put it on a koyukan nunchuck guy and they've got defense they've got throw to attack or throw defense that kind the, of changes things but immovable the issue is is that the i can't hurt oh, the you virtue can token it on, on it only goes on monks jumo and buto oh, that that that's the other that's why i was like if i don't have any other buto to give it to you i'll just give it to him mm -hmm. otherwise no if i could give those Makes abilities sense. to shitai that would be awesome <laughs> so basically he's a selfish pig like all oh, yeah. Silvermoon players. No. I, 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 that was kind of the thought process, yeah. putting him into it. And I mean, I was worried that he wouldn't be able to perform being a 25-point model because I always, because I feel like he definitely got power creeped on. Mm -hmm. But I feel less like that a little bit. I mean, he was able to hold his own. And it's nice that I could at least back him up with Arashi's fan for at least a little bit of range mitigation because um, mm -hmm. I only need to take one Arashi's fan. So... That's right. fine. It's not like I have to cover like several butos and be like, I have to pray that I don't come up against like an arrow storm or something. True. Very true. You were gonna you were gonna chime in about something, Cody? Uh no, I was just no. you know jabbing S about Smurf Silvermoon. In general, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Silvermoon bashing. General Silvermoon bashing. That's acceptable. I'll 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 allow it. All right. So that was that was your main, I'm assuming that was your main beat stick, Jason. So yep. then your your list was kind of all over the place point wise. So we'll go to the next item on your list, which was do, 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 the here we'll hide that. Da, 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 where are you? There they are. The Koyaku Khan. Koyaku Khan. A and B, so you took both of them. Yep, because it's just worth it. I mean, for eight points, these are probably some of the best models in the game, even though they're just an eight-point dude. Really? I like them. Um, I mean, they can, the fact that they can use them to go do objective stuffs and the fact that they're three dice and they're only eight points, that's pretty awesome, and they can suck up activations. Um, mm -hmm. They can take a bullet because I got the range defense one and on the off chance that I fight something that's going to inevitably, inevitably have sidestep defense zero on it. Um, at least I can try to stop them from either surprising me or getting away by using dirty fighting. Um, so yeah, let's, let's take a look at that. So I, I think this is aside from the range defense one, this is the thing that really makes them kind of stand out is, oops, let's, is the dirty fighting. Yeah, not being able to use a special attacker defense during a current melee exchange. So if I get in there first, mm -hmm. um, and I use that if I have the key for it, um, then I'm all. Uh, then I mean, it, I know I'm going to lock something in for that yeah. turn, and then, you're, then you're able to my stop opponent's got to stop the throw, stop the side steps, stop the powerful attacks. That too. You know, there's there's a lot of things it does. You know, it it hamstrings. Uh, now this is this is one of those things where you're probably going to have to talk about timing a little bit. It could it could uh, it could stop Hiroto with his uh, eagle claw or eagle flight defense yeah. from getting three inches away from you, just like it would sidestep unless he plays his one feet, which negates a whole th all sorts of stuff. But no, I I 
I res I respect these figures and and did they pull their weight for you I guess Oh yeah. In the, they the I mean if I lost one I didn't feel all, all that bad about it but I mean they they did what they needed to do. They were basically my they were basically my do whatever I want you to do. If I needed an extra body to gang up on someone, it was one of these guys. If I needed them to go run into a zone to just hold the zone in my enemy's line, uh, I sent one of these guys to go do it because I had the second one. If I needed to have someone take an arrow for someone, I think at least one time I know I had one of these guys take a shot for someone and with range defense, that's even better. Mm -hmm. um, they they can just do a lot of stuff. And I mean, I I would agree with people if they say eight points is too cheap with them. It, I mean, hmm. maybe it's just because it is universal and they can just do a lot of stuff. So I mean, it's fine, but if uh, I know, and I talk with Beard about this, if someone said eh, these guys are too cheap for what they do, I can't really argue it too much. But the issue is, is that I mean, you can't really if you jump it by two points to ten, then it's at that point no one I feel like would they would take them maybe, but it's fifty fifty. And I mean, even if you went them to nine points, I guess maybe that might be comparable. Okay. But I mean, at eight points, I still still think that it's a very it's a very very tempting offer to take with it where it's like i am very tempted just to take both of them um, okay. without any without really much of a second thought one for sure two if i really want to yeah well and it, it fills it fills the list out so it gives you a lot of options there all right so those those were your flippers they were your, they were your they will call them your swiss army knife in your list the next figure in your traveling show of pain is a figure that I, I think, is, from, from my standpoint, and I'm not finding him. I must hate him so much that I don't even have him in my library. Oh, I know who you're going to pick, and I hate him too. <laughs> <laughs> there he is, the man, the myth, the legend. The person who got nerfed coming to Risen Sun. Nerf is an odd way of describing him, but there he, he is. He did get nerfed from his former glory of what he used to be. He totally got nerfed, but I mean, he's still good. The, the he's ele still broken for eleven rice. For eleven rice, the ultimate ranged killing machine, Wasapu. Yeah, um, I, he doesn't really need a lot of explanation. I feel like, I mean, just being able to rapid fire is awesome. And then he's got fortune, which I mean, all, all the other models on my list have had fortune, which is going to play out and a little bit further on to how my list worked out. Mm -hmm. um, but being able to rapid fire is like huge. And then throwing lucky number eight on him, it's like the perfect card for him because especially on ranges. On range so while I pull up the 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 second card here, so we could be at the back of the card. What does what does lucky number eight do? Uh, lucky number eight is any dice result that it results exactly as a seven. You get to treat that overall result as an eight. So it's yeah, it's basically a. It, I it ensures that I am going to be hitting. I'm going to be getting a net result of an eight on my dice. Yeah. So one way. Or, yeah. yeah. yeah a better nice, better shot yeah. to get eight. So even if you roll a seven, you're going to catch that eight. Yeah. And the nice thing too is, is because of how it's worded, it's all tests. So I know that that actually came up a couple times where mm. in melee or something else, if I roll a seven, I net resulted as an eight. So that's actually it's a super awesome card for one race. So yeah, this you know, and, and you look at his key feats. And his key feats are just, they're, they're vile beyond words. So Strafe gives him the rapid fire too. So when you need it, you just kind of, you know, hose something down. And then if you're going up against even, let's say, heavy armor dudes, you know, if, if he's loaded for bear with key, he could even make a, a Minimoto figure quake in fear. Because if he gets rapid fire too, and then let's say he throws, you know, so that's two points, two key. If he's got five key sitting on him, two points for the Strafe, Three points for vital strike. That means anything that hits with the strafe is going to ignore three points of armor. And most Minimoto are sitting at three and four armor. He's plus one on his bow, so he could be either dice even. Or plus one. Or plus one. Uh, you know, that that's 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 some... And, and the range is not that bad. So, yeah, I, I've learned to hate him. Cody's learned to hate him. I, I hate... Oh, I it's not really even that I hate Wasapu. It's just I hate Wasapu in Jason's hands with Jason's <laughs> dice. Well, and that the fact that he's got lucky number eight on it, so that way, even if he just rolls a little, you know, you he needs. Uh, let's say your your defense is a, a five or a six, and he rolls a seven. Next thing you know, it's going to be one success level higher. 
Right. So it, it's essentially giving him brutal. Now, only officially. if he rolls a certain number. Only well, if he yeah, rolls but seven's pretty uh, common. It's very in Jason's dice and very doable on three dice. Especially with doable. your manipulation that you're able to do and whatnot. So, well, oh, yeah. so this this would you say that uh, while Oda and Tantalo draw a lot of attention, what would you say in your list before we go through the rest of it is your main killing thing? Would you say Wasapu was your main main item to eliminate things uh if it was a medium or large play large base absolutely okay. um otherwise i mean it was always a toss-up because odin Tantal actually did put in some good work and killing stuff wasapu was always like if i want to kill something ahead of time or if there was like a kami i wanted to try to shoot the kami downs mm -hmm. um to do that otherwise he was like my he was basically the executioner of anything that was going to be medium or large base okay okay that's fair. especially if i could get strafe off um Correctly. Right, right. So, so we've we've seen your we've seen your killing power, and your we've seen your your flipping, and your 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 all purpose figures in the Koyukans. So that brings us to then, what I would probably say is the the I don't want to say focal point, but that that might be a little too much. But I would say it's probably the one thing that was unique about your list, or at least from what everybody's saying is. The most Her. broken model in Silverman. <laughs> the most, <laughs> they're the all most, broken models. Yeah, what say, we they're say. All broken models. I mean, in this particular case, though, I mean, like I said with Beard Mini, I and I think Cody, I think I got this one from you, but I could, I would definitely argue that this is like top three miniatures in the game. One hundred percent. Okay. All right. So, you know, he's a, he's just he's a sixteen rice, so he's about he's a, he's a little higher than average. You know, but he's only got two in melee, one in range. He gets two, can hold up to 10 key. That's fairly impressive. He's got chopsticks as a weapon. I mean. Not just broken. <laughs> he should be unarmed. Fortune Tactician one, which that's great, because then you don't have to buy a card to get it. Yeah, that Leader, is super nice. Leadership's nice resistance. I mean, I'm looking and I'm saying, all right, Jace, either you're smoking something or those two key feats have to do something pretty damn good. Fortune's favor is what makes him uh, cheat fate. I didn't really get a chance to use and that. I would describe as like my nuclear option where it's like, I need this to happen and mm -hmm. I got to be like desperate, like last turn of the game. And I have a lot of key. Um, but Fortune's favor is what makes this guy being able to produce an eight inch aura and I get to effectively get every reroll ability in the game and then some that don't exist yet or will never exist. Um, that's huge. Um, for every, it takes one key just to activate the aura, and then for every die that I want to re-roll while within the aura, um, that gives me ultimate dice manipulation to save myself if I screw something up, or more realistically, um, screwing with my opponent's dice to risk them flubbing a die roll all of a sudden, where it's like, oh, I got a seven in defense. We rolled that six. Oh, I just got a one. So I have a th three in defense, or I have but two in defense. It's like, yeah, that now all of a sudden I'm hitting a lot harder yeah. um, and vice versa on my guy. So this is what makes this model. Um, and I mean, it, it only really relies on me having to go all bore in on fortune to get it to work correctly. Um, which in this particular case throughout the tournament, I definitely did. And I have a model that helped me with that a little bit more. Um, but fortune's favor is what makes this guy. Yeah, and 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 the and the trick with it being, and it, it you look at it, and it's an active one, and so you're thinking, oh, I, I got to be active to actually do it. But that's just to put the aura up, and then once it's up, it's yep. there. It basically acts almost like an instant. Yeah. So then it, it just is it it's just terrible, just oh, yeah. terrible. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, so yeah, it's def that definitely is. I mean, he can be mitigated by balance, but. Even then, that just means he's storing onto key. So at, at one point or another, he's going to try to force the inevitable roll in Bushido where you need to make that roll, and then he's going to force you to screw it up. Um, mm -hmm. It's only a matter of time. I mean, that that that's kind of my way of viewing him and how I kind of always thought of him. It's like if I come against, if I come across balance, I'm going to have a bunch of key to either have him attack people with, or he's just going to sit on a bunch of key unless if he gets killed. Mm -hmm. then I'm going to be sitting on a bunch of key just waiting to force that one die roll that's going to force my opponent to go all downhill unless if my opponent put in amazing work to wipe out my army before well, that. And, yeah, and then here's the other thing with him, and 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 I kind of 
I'm going to jump back here, Car, just to kind of show this. And this is why I'm always, he's deceptive. So, you know, he can sit on a lot of key at some point if he's not, and Fortune's Fader is cheap. It's one to put it up, and then it's one for every die roll that you want to have re-rolled, whether it's, whether it's enemy or if it's friendly. So you get to affect both. So that that's a that's awesome just right there. But should somebody jump him and they don't surprise him, so that way he could actually spend key, that he's only spending two to boost that two melee up. So two melee sucks, but spending two to get it up, and for someone who generates two with fortune, so it could potentially double every turn and could hold on to ten. Like he becomes a four, he could become he, a four be melee four. model yeah, very quickly. Absolutely, absolutely. So he could defend himself and then maybe get the lucky chopstick strike through somebody's nose and kill him. That's why he's broken. That's why he's broken. <laughs> <laughs> At sixteen rice, that's why he's broken. I wouldn't complain as much if he was eighteen, but if they bump that to three, I'd be like, yeah, it's annoying with Fortune's favor. He's a really good model at sixteen, but. So no. what? But the fact I mean, that he can sneak attack kill you is just annoying. I mean, yeah, I never get, put him. I, him. Yeah. I've never put him in a situation where I needed to bum rush him up. I to me, no. I, those four, those rerolls are much more fortunate or much more valuable. If it's just if someone comes at him, then I've got a I, he's got at least a little bit of a baked in security. Well, that's and that's the thing there. It's it's the it it really is the the having it. You know, could you use them for offense? You really don't want to, but if somebody comes to attack you, you're as long as you got surprised, you are in better shape to defend yourself than anybody else. And 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 this is the other thing you gotta remember. So it's gonna cost so let's say again you're sitting on you're sitting on six key. You spent one at the beginning of the round, so you go down to five. So that way you are you're you know, so you have fortune's favor up. Great. Then you get attacked. All right, I'm, I'm a two, and I'm being attacked by a four key mo a uh, four melee pool model. All right, so I'm going to drop another four key, so my five goes down to one. But now I'm a four melee pool. Now I can defend myself. But the kicker is, I have one key sitting there. So if somebody, if if I roll a bad die or my opponent rolls a bad die, we'll, we'll just take out all the other reroll shenanigans that that uh that silver moon have and just focus on the on the fact that you can you could alter so you're you, let's say you roll an average defense but you know and get like a three or a four and your opponent rolls an eight that's pretty much going to wipe Har harkichi out but you can make him re-roll that six or maybe you get a decent defense, but you threw one in attack, and he didn't put anything. He put one in attack and rolled, you know, moderately good for that. And you rolled really good on your attack. You can make him re-roll that defense. Uh, that's why I think he's so deceptive. Now, again, against heavy armor like a mini moto, is he going to kill him in one shot? No, no, no. He's minus five against some of them on his dice roll. But for a lot of other models, uh, you know. Uh, He's he's gonna be pretty you know he he makes you think twice. The other yeah. nice thing too is having tactician on him for sixteen points. I think we talked about that earlier, and that definitely helped me a lot. So having tactician, knowing a good number of the time I was going to win my tactical rolls, mm -hmm. um, that definitely helped. And resistance, resistance is good too. So it gives him protection. So protection, yeah. I mean, in general, he is he is a really solid model. And 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 as you get into discussing your your matches, you'll see why he was such a focal point for it. So, uh, you know, Hark Harkichi could not do it by himself. So let's take a look at. <coughs> excuse me. Let's take a look at what you brought to kind of support. Harkichi, because what Silver Moon list doesn't have at least six or seven support models in it? <laughs> Yokozuna's Revenge. <laughs> that, well, true. yeah, that's, that's all just <laughs> that's all just beat face. But you brought, <coughs> excuse me, Cade. Yep, um, Cade is what oh. Cade is who helped me. Um, one helped me abuse fortune, um, so that way I, I was more likely to get the double key bonus um there are still somewhere even with the second flip i still failed it but getting that second flip is huge 
Um, mm-hmm. And then using Heed My Word, that is a it's a great ability um, because I can use not only can I use it on my own figures, but I can use it on my enemies. Um, didn't really use mixed direction, but Heed My Word is huge, being either able to pull enemies towards me using willpower or moving my own models closer to an objective if I needed to like get an early flip on something. Yeah, I've 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 now learned to respect Heed My Word a lot more. It's it's almost to the point where Heed My Word and and maybe they need to not have whatever Cade is. Cade's what he's a I don't even know what he is. Kabuki. A kabuki. Kabuki. Um you know, he could he 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 takes the place of the uh he takes the place of the uh of the roses. Yeah, he definitely so does. So that way, you know, so that way, because with Heed My Word, perform a walk on a t- with the target model, if th- it's an opposed key test. Okay, ooh, yeah. Again, well, I'll... it's the opposed key test, but since I'm active, he also has willpower, so that gives me a plus one right there. Gives you the plus one, and then you've got sitting in your hip pocket, you know, Harakichi, if he's within eight inches of Harakichi, it's like, oh, look, you made that six, let's re-roll that. Yep. And then next thing you know, you're you're walking him and turning him around and all sorts of fun stuff. That is true. I didn't get a chance to use misdirection, but I know when I was talking with Beard, that's also actually another really sick ability. Um, and that one doesn't even need to roll. You can just throw it on whoever you want, like Fetty. Now, did you ever? There's Joe, Ha, and Q. I, I, that, those are the <laughs> those are the ones that really screw with me. <laughs> so I cannot target Ken, which no one doesn't knows exist. Who Ken is. Not yet. I'm sure Ken's coming. Yeah, he'll be in Temple. He'll be in Temple. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's going to be in uh, Temple. Which Temple? Temple Rokan or Temple Kinshi? Well, it's going to be my Grandmaster model. Oh. So okay. Ken- <laughs> and, and and what will and what what beast will Ken be? <laughs> he will be. I don't know. I'm just messing around. He'll uh, make it so Silver Moon just has to give the uh, Temple player a hundred dollars. <gasps> <laughs> you can make it the first Temple Rokan snake monk with hairpiece. Oh, Ooh, there we go. There we go. We're combining all the ideas. Magnetic hairpieces. <laughs> I want to magnetize the hairpieces. <laughs> and he gets power-ups. Just like the Temple, just like the Void Temple. So every time he gets certain things, he powers up and his hair changes. Oh, it gets taller and taller. Oh, God. Bald, hairpiece, normal hair. Super Saiyan. Super Saiyan Snake Monk. Oh, genius. <laughs> and this is why I'll never win a Grandmasters ever, because my ideas are so ridiculous, it's not even funny. So I will say, and I've seen lots of people use Cade, so you're using them for the reflips, which is huge. Because, mm-hmm. you know, you're you're almost guaranteeing. Now, not always, like you say, there's a chance you could double flip and and and, and you know, on the second flip you're gonna get the you're gonna get tails or whatever. And blow it, but majority of the time you're going to get it because it's a fifty percent throw. So the second time you should have a good chance to get it, um, and that way you make sure everybody's filled with key. Um, so yeah, I, I like him. I've, I I will say all this other stuff here at the end. Each model using fortune. That's the Joe Ha. Loses insignificant and slow. I did actually have to use that. Well, as we talk about my matchups, that actually did come into play. But usually, I yeah. have had. I did have to use Ha at least one time because I needed him to either. I needed him to tie up a model, so I couldn't let it go, and it was at a position where I had plenty of key. Um, so I wasn't worrying too much about it. Okay, and then the then Q, which that's the final turn of the game. So who cares? That one's always fifty fifty. I mean, it, <clears throat> honestly, I feel like that one hurts you more because if I'm in the if I'm in the driver's seat, then it's actually going to screw me over because it's like uh, I'm starting to lose activations off my guys because things got killed. Well, if you're killing rice, if you're killing low rice cost stuff, just don't kill anything and let him try to kill you, and then he'll just slow himself down that fa- that much faster. That's true. So, Cade, good support model, especially for what you were trying to do with this particular list. All right, so this comes to the last two models <laughs> of your list, which have undergone, um, we'll say, immediately we've seen a new uh, a change to them and then a potential rule change coming for them. So what I'll say, hyper-controversial? Uh, no, but... Uh, it's a little bit of the ones you're looking for. Are a little there bit, it is. Right? There you go. Yeah, Rex and Chad, Chad, the pit Rex dog. Rex and Chad, pit dogs A and B, otherwise known as. 
So why did uh, why did we take uh, pit dogs A and B, and then so, we'll talk about how things have changed for them in 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 two weeks' time? They're supposed to be just harassing models, so harass other models to ways to suck up activations, force people to do things that they don't want to do. Otherwise, they were there to take arrows for Hadakuchi or Hadakichi and uh, and Oda and Tantal if I really needed to. I didn't have like a nunchuck guy nearby. That was pretty much it because, I mean, for three points and having tough, they're solid little fuckers. Yeah, three, <laughs> three points and tough, they, they can be in a nuisance. Absolutely. Um, you know, they're not, they're not terribly fast, although they are light-footed, so that's helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they're only two, but you know, depending on how you're using them, or if you could turn something around, you could get that to your benefit. I mean, they're not overpowering. They're three points. Who cares? But you you touched on two things that have brought them what I would say is undue attention. So first... By accident. It, so sorry to all the other Silver Moon players. It's, it's, was, it's was not it, by accident. Not, I think this is something that's been happen. coming. Um, so one, you know, for th for six points, you're getting four activations. All right, you know, that's that's solid. Plus, you can use them to take away other activations if you're attacking somebody. So you, you're 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 expanding your numbers and getting more activations, which that's that's a big part of the game is being able to have more activations than your opponent. The second one is they become arrow catchers or blockers or whatever. Well, insignificant means they don't cast a zone of control and they can't do an assist, but apparently they can catch arrows. So that's important because. If you're playing a Buto heavy list or you want to protect a particular model from being hit by arrows, having something, having it so that way they're just in front where any shot's going to go through their zone of control should stop it. Which now brings us it, we're, we're, change. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna divert just a little bit in our list talk to talk about some changes that have been made to the rules. So apparently in the new rule book that comes in the two player set, which is essentially a revision, it's not a new edition. We'll call it uh, we'll call it 3.5 if you want. Uh, but they have clarified something on insignificant. Anything that's insignificant cannot catch arrows. So in that that sequence of when you're firing a range, when you're doing a range attack against a model, if, a, if the shot, if the line of sight passes through the zone of control of a model that still has activation, you could take the shot on that model, on that other model, rather than the original target. It had been ruled prior to this that even though insignificant means you have no zone of control, it didn't stop them from catching arrows. So they would become primary arrow catchers or very good cheap arrow catchers that could have a little bit of offensive ability and be able to waste activation. That is no longer the case due to the clarification on insignificant. So that's new. Now, would that have, now, uh, would that have changed whether you put these in your list or not? No, I mean, honestly, uh, and I mean, more fortunate for me, I didn't really come up against a lot of range stuff. Yeah. Um. So that I mean, there was a couple where I think in my second round it might have helped. I think it, it definitely did help a little bit, but either either then I think I still had a nunchuck guy that took the hit. Mm -hmm. Um, but f I mean, again, t having them catch the arrows was just more of like this is just a byproduct of me having a cheap three-point model. So I would still take them, even though Insignificant's not going to let me let them catch the arrow. Mm. Now, if they if I have to use them like as like a direct blocker so you can't see my model to target mm. it, then, I mean, I could effectively get the same result. It's just you're going to have to shoot that guy to get a there. A wall of dogs. Pretty much. <laughs> um, otherwise, I mean, or at least I'm going to force my opponent to move somewhere. So then that way they're going to have to take the move penalty. Mm -hmm. um, so that way they can actually see whichever target that they're shooting at, or at least whatever sure. small target they're shooting at. Um, uh, so that's kind of what it is. But, I mean, otherwise, their other main function for being able to engage stuff and mm -hmm. just kind of turn people around with facings, um, that's not too unchanged. Not too unchanged. Okay. So that brings us to the second part, then, is is the activations. So, again, for six points, you're getting four activations. So now the what I'm going to tell next is not a rule. It's not an errata yet, but it is something that is being at least rumors on the boards, whether it be Discord, or probably specifically the Discord, is that they are considering making a change to animals. Now this came about less because of pit dogs and more because of silverbacks, but I guess it's potentially going to be applied to all animals in that if it's an animal, it will be having it. It will gain the group ability so a little bit like the um 
the hellhounds. Yeah, the the, the alphas for um for um for Savage, Savage Wave. Wave. Uh, the Kaihi. They, yeah, the Kaihi. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Um where they get the they get a group activation. So you could have up to 3 of them or 4 of them, but they all have to activate in groups. So essentially all four are one activation. So in this case the pit dogs would have one activation except you're activating both of them at the same time now with insignificant that means they can't assist each other while they're attacking something so it makes them a little less effective well they're already not terribly effective in combat because they weren't able to assist each other but with the group activation because you get to use them at the same time they're a little less usable um because, you know, you're not going to be able to surprise anybody when you both jump them at the same time if you didn't surprise them to begin with. Um, so knowing that, and again, this is something that, again, it's not a rule as of yet. It's something they are considering. So we have to keep that in mind. And that's probably going to have to go through some testing to see if they want to go that route. But if they made that change, in addition to the insignificant change, would you still keep the pit dogs in your list? It'd be a little bit more difficult for me to, to justify it. I probably would take one. Um, and then I would consider the second one. I mean, when I was test playing it until day of where Brian told it, or where the judge called me over, mm -hmm. Brian called me over and said, hey, you're three points short. And I was like, wait, what? And yeah. then he said, yeah, you can add three points. And I was like, oh, cool. I'm just going to add the second pit dog. I mean, I'd already been playing the list with only one pit dog and handicapping myself. Yeah, so... Um, so. so, I mean, it it... I think that's going to be a little bit rough considering that they have insignificant and then they're going to do the group link on there at that point. I would really hope then that they maybe drop insignificant and then they give us and they give them aloof. Um, that might be a fair trade off because at least on the pit dogs, I, I wouldn't disagree on a on pit, pit dog. dog. Yeah. Yeah, you know, on it, on the on a uh, on a uh, waka akuma the, the little yeah, no. weasel no the, I, yeah the mongoose and the chicken no. yeah. those those guys can still be insignificant but I think on like again if you got like a pit dog I mean it it it, it does produce somewhat of a presence um, so I mean okay. I would think that that would be maybe a fair trade off and then then they can go back to being arrow catchers in a sense because they won't be insignificant anymore okay. um, but if you take group activation with them. Um, I really hope that they would kind of, again, make that small adjustment to it instead of just focusing on like, oh, it's the it's the silverbacks, which are the issue, which I mean, right. they have they have kind of weaknesses built into them. Being well, let, we're not we're not going to we're not going to well, let's not yeah, drift we'll into talk the silverback that, thing. And again, this is pure speculation that they're going to be doing that. It was it was something that was thrown out there. Now, whether it actually happens or not is a whole different discussion, but it's it's just something to to consider that's potentially in the works, but currently right now is not uh, and may never come to pass. So just, just food for thought on that. But in general, I don't disagree with the taking of the pit dogs. Uh, even if they were with group, it, it does throw more bodies out there. It does give you a little more, um, you know, it's it's just, it, 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 they were decent. They're a decent tool for, for three points. They still keep, they still got to keep something busy. Uh, mm -hmm. Even if it's a lower point model, even even against uh, uh, Onis, you could still use them against the slaves. You could still do things and light footed, which is something that I thought was lacking in your list. So this helped cover that up a little bit. Oh yeah. All right. So let's. Uh, da, 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 da. So that pretty much was the figures in your list. But like any good Silver Moon player, you have to have a truckload <clears throat> of. Um, of cards <laughs> of cards <laughs> so in the first one that you had if i could find it oh, there it is what self-respecting silverman player does not have hotai's blessing in place yep this was the this was just i, I even with how to i mean i guess i didn't need to take hotai's blessing but i still thought for two rice it's definitely worth it um especially <laughs> in the Especially in the turn that I would use it, that just saves me extra key on not having Hadakichi reroll my ones for me. Or, in fact, it gave me a second reroll opportunity if I really screwed up. It's like, all right, now you get a third chance to try to fix your screw up. And then Absolutely. after that, then I just deserve to die. That, 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 that was kind of the mindset of it. It's like, if I failed this three times, no, that, 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 that one is what it has to be at this point. I think it's worth its weight in saving, your, saving you uh, key. So just just for that, I mean, Harakichi, you don't want to necessarily blow all of his key. If you get a turn where you could start stock, stockpiling key for later rounds, so much the better. And that definitely does it. Um, and yeah, just 
a solid card. I, I wish I could get it, but we can only get Hotai's coin. And then when I roll that second one, on the very first time I try to get rid of a one. <laughs> it's gone. <sighs> yeah. And also causes people like, you know, me to take balance in every single list when he knows, when I know I'm playing Jason. Well, and I think with Har- Harakichi, you got to take balance. That's one of those things. I, I guess if you're playing Silver Moon in general, having balance in the mix is not a it, it's totally worth it i mean balance in general it's great to have against silver moon it's one turn of grace that yeah you can have all right so hotai's blessing pretty self-explanatory works great everybody loves it no problems there so the next next event that you had was doo, doo, doo. and this one i'm not surprised you didn't take it as much oh Let's come back. There we go. It was bought loyalty. Yeah, I personally take this one. Apparently in the Silver Moon boards, this is not as popular, at least from my understanding of what people are kind of talking about when I was chatting with some people. I like it just as an insurance policy. Um, if I really don't want, if I want to at least make inconvenience someone, I don't want them to something to happen, whether that be to flip an idol, move somewhere, shooting me. I mean, just about mm-hmm. anything. I mean, forcing at least someone to take that challenge test of a six even on a two dice model there's still a there's still a good chance that they mess up that roll and then just mm-hmm. their activation ends and i'm all the better for it yeah i'm not going to disagree it's it's like uh uh what's that dude who's the who's the 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 jumo referee who stops people in their tracks it's oh Shinos- shinosuke shinosuke it's it's essentially uh, you know a two-point card that gives you that and again anything that can mess with people's activations in this game is is worth its weight in gold uh all right so then the next card of which you took multiples of and i hate on a deep and abiding level <laughs> <laughs> Inside information. Oh, why did I do that? I should have done that. There we go. Yep. Inside information. I definitely took all three of those. Um, they were part A, an insurance policy if I lost tactical role, um, which was super nice. Um, part B, if I needed to set something up um, or I just threw people's activations out of order for them not to want to do certain things or like i said the main thing was getting myself set up for a lot of those things throwing out one or two and then the nice thing also was is that if someone passed the theme uh challenge test for putting the impetuous out then i could just throw that out automatically and i'd be fine with it um and then if i got the first one activated then it stretched this ability out a little bit further because i could double impetuous a model to either they're gonna have to either come out the field or you're gonna waste an entire turn with that model Okay. Yeah. So again, it, and again, anything that messes with how your opponent wants to do their activations is is worth its weight in gold. Uh, all right. So the next few fi- next few things that we have here, I'm gonna do that. Oh, the We're only not gonna other... put the cards up. Oh, yeah. go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say the only other card I think we missed was the rice bale barricade, which we all. Uh, no, nope, we have two does. more cards. I'm just oh, really? gonna okay. gonna flash these up really quick because they're in a whole different folder. No. <laughs> so the next one was preordain. Oh, yep, that one I learned from you. I'm not gonna lie, because that was either it was another <laughs> card or something else. I mean, preordain is just nice to have extra dice in my pockets. Um, if I got a good dice roll, oh, cool, I've got I've got something to pass a fear checker, pass whatever I need to pass. If I fail or if I rolled crap, eh, my opponent gets those dice. If I rolled so so, then I I You'll find a use for the so so dice at some point in time. Yeah, That's find for it sure. somewhere to use it. Damage. Damage, yeah, damage is always nice. A three and a four in damage is always nice. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's not you know not not earth shaking. But a one or a two, you know, ones are definitely ones and twos are definitely going to your enemy somewhere, and fives and sixes are definitely going into your attack rolls or whatever. I mean, preordain. I'll, I'll vouch for preordain having having that ability to alter a die roll or to make sure that your one of your dice is going to be either successful at the maximum ability if you roll well for it or your opponent is going to booch it is is huge and the fact that that die cannot be changed or re-rolled is huge so yeah. once once you put that preordained die in for you either yourself or your enemy that's it nothing it's stuck it's stuck and and that's just that's just extra gravy on it uh last item was a bit of terrain was the rice bale barricade 
yeah, or a rice I, ball barricade if you prefer. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just took that because it was uh, terrain placements and mm -hmm. I mean, to clog up lanes, I guess. Um, and I, you know, and also after me and Cody, I think played in the tournament and he explained to me, Oh, you have to spend key plus an activation. I was like, all right, that's just like even more broken for one race. So yeah, I'm going to, Oh yeah. It's destructible there. terrain. Yeah. You gotta kind of do the key and the weight. Yeah. Action. That, 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 that's kind of silly. If you're already sacrificing a lot for the weight action. So the mm -hmm. fact that you got to spend key on it too, that's a little bit like, yeah, the, it should definitely be worth more than one. Yeah. And I'll, and I'll say in our meta, we really never really played with a lot of terrain unless you count smoke bombs as terrain or smoke field, but that's, that's specifically ninjas really. So I, I don't remember seeing uh, up until recently, I don't remember seeing rice bale barricades and, and sun goddess shrines and Grintos up until last couple months, to be honest. So it, it was nice seeing everybody have that. And I, I get what that's used for. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right. So that was, that's your list in a nutshell. Um, you know, uh, pretty solid and, and it looks like it had all the working parts and you covered all your bases. You had your hitters and Wasapu and Oda and Tantalo. You had your, your jack of all trades or flippers or, or objective runners, uh, in the Koyukan, uh, Koyukan dudes, the Shaites, and then you had your pit dogs, which were just extra activations in Cade. Mm -hmm. doing Cade stuff. <laughs> so kabuki your typical, the, the Kabuki man, your typical Silver Moon list. So having this and having played it a couple times prior, what was your, so your first round matchup, what was your first round matchup? Uh, first round matchup was Oni's. It was, I think, an Alpha's list. Okay. Um, that had <clears throat> Bobata, had well, a, oh, Go ahead. Yeah, Keep it going. was, it was an Oni list. Um, and it was the first time that they had the two-headed oni and i got to oh, learn Kenmo the, and Ushi, yeah yeah i got to learn that um craziness that they could get themselves <laughs> up to four dice and i was like oh um yeah that's a uh, that, that, that that's that uh, cool um i mean it, it, basically the big ones in that game was the, the mvp actually in that game was the terrain setup um because <laughs> well in that particular board so was uh idols across the middle with vim um, yes, and I'm, so I'm, we I'm had that up we there. had the woods like plop center in the middle of the of the board, and he and my opponent had taken flank and had brought in uh, I think he had the bell ringer and one other oni. Um, I could I dealt with the one oni okay, um, but he had gotten to a point where he had gotten Bobata up to a point where he could swing his bell and knock everybody around. Um, but because we had the big train element in the middle and uh, like Hadakichi, Kate, a lot of my guys were in that woods, they all got cover. So it, it definitely lessened the blow on there. And then okay. Kate was the big MVP because he had one of his, uh, I, because his only kept on coming off the line. I just kept on heating him and forcing him back to go back to the line. So he couldn't go anywhere. So until it, he got con until Kate got controlled and then I couldn't do that for a turn. I was like, oh darn. That that brings another beat stick in on top for you. So yeah, <laughs> it's, it's kind of here. I, I, and and what I'll say is I'll have to say probably then Kate is a step up from the roses because the roses would have brought that Oni to you. So you'd have to have either flanked on the side and then mm -hmm. made it go sideways or whatnot. And eventually then the Oni's going to come to you and then beat the crap out of the rose. Yeah. Once it makes a disguise, but Cade. He, my words, just flipping him around and, okay, go back to the line. Go back to the line. Go back to the line. And he's facing the opposite way, so he can't just run back to yeah. get a little bit, to gain a little bit of ground. Exactly. So, and and possibly leave him leave him vulnerable for a shot from Wasapu. So, who yeah. knows? Well, Wasapu uh, was my VM in this one. So he was your VM? There, there was a couple times where Wasapu almost got ganked, um, but <laughs> either from him controlling models or other things, but eventually I was able to kind of sneak him around to the other side of the board and just kind of have him in like that. He's a 50 50 if he's going to actually be my runner or if he's not going to be my runner um okay. and by the time that we got to the last round my enemy my opponent asked me oh is this your vim and i was like yeah that's my vim and he's like all right well i already can't get the first two so i mean we're just going to call it here at this point because yeah, so it, the last I, round th yeah. yeah they there was no way that they were going to be able to get their vim up the then board. you had already did you oh yeah up the board okay because you probably tied him up all right well yeah because i tied him up with uh with some of my guys um because he had his Vim as the two-headed Oni, um, and be, and I got and I had locked him up. Well, because the other people that it had his other um, his other specialty guys, mm -hmm. they all flanked. So being a Vim, you can't oh, flank. 
That's right. So I didn't think about it till then, but I was pretty sure it was. I mean, regardless, it doesn't matter. Any Oni as a Vim is going to be rough. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So I pulled off the 3 0, which for Silver Moon, that can be rather difficult um, as we kind of go along throughout my day. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Then, so that was round one. You ended up with a 3 0 victory there. Yep. Uh, so going into round two, um, we already know Cody's round two was was especially stressful, yeah. taking on a, taking on a former grandmaster. But you also took on a grandmaster. Yep. And of I course, did. your lovely master of ceremony GM decided that you were going to have the most difficult of scenarios in Osatsu. So, who? What was your opponent for Osatsu? So it was Silver Moon themed, but it was the sisters. It was the sisters okay. so or well it was imperial yeah. so it, was imperial, imperial it was imperial march, march but this but run with silver moon as the backup so he had all the silver moon backup cards and then ran the sisters with karu um getting the death sentence marker thrown out immediately Oops. on oda and tantalo sucked um because i definitely had to be a lot more reserved with him okay um but surprisingly he made it to the end um there was a couple things that my opponent forgot that might that probably would have taken him down a little bit sooner okay. um but beyond that, I mean, the game itself was really close. And because he had the sisters and the sisters can throw out the other, the extra activations on each other. Mm -hmm. um, like, I won't lie, like that center idol for flipping back and forth, I, that idol, it's been the most flip I've ever seen. And I mean, that's saying a lot because you have to do a complex action to flip one of those things. Yes. Um, so, I mean, it was a very strong game back and forth. And I mean, it basically it basically went down to the last turn and me having to charge how into one of his last models to hopefully, cause I had to waste her other activation. Otherwise she's just going to come after him exhausted. And after he ran mm -hmm. um, to hopefully just like he lives. And then I just have to occupy your zone. So then that way I can get the one Oh and how bit the dust, unfortunately. So it ended zero zero, but it was a really, really close game. Um, also learn the pit dogs don't have to listen to the imperial envoy because it doesn't work on animals so Ooh. having a dog rip apart and <laughs> go after an imperial envoy <laughs> was kind of just funny from my perspective because it doesn't is... work on non it doesn't work on non it works on non insignificant i think also it says non animal models nice. so so i was like oh well that's good because i think i was going to bring oda and tantalo to hit him and he fa and he used the obey or whatever the imperial yeah, envoy's he, ability is and yeah. then when he's then when it's like non-significant non-insignificant animal models i'm like oh, i have two of those so i'm gonna go send a dog after you that works <laughs> um so that 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 definitely helped um so that was a zero zero draw for round two then. Um yep. and again that was against that was against the twenty nineteen Grandmaster. It looks like they switched it up a bit too. Going with uh an Imperial March list, although with a lot of Silver Moon uh influence, we'll say. Yeah, definitely he took three inf inside information and dark secrets and, and he used them all at one go. So I mean like I definitely kind of like, ouch, this is how other people feel, but then I was like, eh, I mean <laughs> yes. I'll be I I am used yes, to it is. <laughs> I'm used to doing it to other people and my list is so my list is flexible enough where it's like, yeah, there's an order activation for certain things, but at the same time too all I really need to do is make sure that I'm active to use Harakichi's feet uh, ability and then everybody else like it I can still make it work. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. So then round three, what was your round three matchup? So round you... three was uh, Temple. Oh, that's right. That's one, was... Against one of our locals. One of the local guys. Yes. Um, so that one I was a bit worried about, even though my opponent's like, I, I don't know. I have in our test playing against each other. I haven't come up with an answer to you. I'm like, you're still playing Temple. That This is still, this is still going to be a hard <laughs> match for me. Yeah. Even, yeah. Even if I can mess with your rerolls and do all this other stuff, it's just Temple, just in general. They they cover everything, but they do it well. <laughs> yeah, they they have an answer for pretty much everything that you can do. You know, they have they have high. If it's monks, they have a lot of they have a high key stat or at least a two key stat, so that way they could stymie you from doing some of your tricks that are opposed key rolls. They have a lot um, of dice. They've got they kata. Lot, they got kata. Of them. You know, they 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 lack rerolls. That's about the only thing that they they kind of lack uh, if they're a heavy monk heavy list. And also going into Ryoto, I you know uh, the one th I figured you'd be okay doing objective missions, but zone, given that you have really 
one model that could kind of hold his own, which would be Oda and Tantalo, and then a lot of other chafe. Now that could help to crowd zones, but not uh, not necessarily. But if somebody puts a concerted effort to beat the crap out of you or push you out of the zone, you really can't. Although you might have out-activate him. So how so how did this matchup end up? So it ended with a 2-1, but I fell behind the eight ball and um, I lost out on the first scenario point. I did because um, Temple had so much extra moving shenanigans and a bunch of other things to get them in the zone mm -hmm. um, with Cloudwalk or anything else because I think he had Yuki and some other, other monks that just had good lines to jump the middle zone. Um, I, there wasn't anything I could do to get enough models in there to crowd him out. Okay. Um, so that's how I ended up losing that one. Um, but it, it was kind of the same thing that when we had done in, when we had done in practice at the store, um, I took down, I was lucky. And again, I think it's one of the few players that's actually done. It. I took down, uh, Sinichiro and, Suchiro. What, uh, Suchiro. Suchiro. Yeah. and once he went down, then that was kind of like his whole staying power right there. Then a lot of the other stuff started to kind of come down and I was surprisingly pushing his zone, uh, rather, hard and also keeping him slightly at bay because of uh because of wasapu <laughs> now how did you take sochiro down um so sochiro went down so i think he was still activated and tireless but i had oda and tantalo already in the zone beating on him i think i had another pit or i had another pit dog that had flipped him around mm -hmm. and then i brought in a nunchuck dude and backstruck him so he i or basically, I oh, I know that I had gotten him outnumbered also. So I had brought yeah, him outnumbered him and, exa and yeah. exhausted and flipped him around. And I struck him in the back. So I surprised him. Um, so he threw everything in defense and just had a poor defense roll. And I did really well on my attack. And even though he healed um, prior Su to Su it, Chiro, um, before everything, I just rolled really well on the damage roll. Um, so that's how I took him out. Now, I will say you also uh, did, did did our local meta proud by having one of your Koyukan, uh, Koyu, Koyukan, uh, gank dudes. the little girl, gank the little girl, always, <laughs> always, always kill the small children. And in Bushido, that's rule number one, kill the small children. They're the yes. dangerous, most dangerous things ever. Uh, so, so that got you a two, two, one victory. So that mm -hmm. poise, that, that puts you. You were you were on the lower table, and I know for your last round you were facing Savage Wave again. Yep, I paid another Savage Wave. It was another Alphas. It was very similar to the list I'd played in round one. A lot of similar models. Um, well, similar as in a lot of Oni slaves. Um, they didn't decide to flank, and uh, and then their two little or the two other Onis were a little bit different. I think it was the one that has the big. Buddha head that gets thrown around, and then uh, then the other so, one was uh, Raksha. Yeah, it was Victoria. Raksha, game. Kimono, Waka, and then two slaves in June because that was yeah. my third round opponent, I believe. Okay, okay, yeah. So that one, um, that was an interesting. That one was definitely an interesting one. Um, my opponent misunderstood one thing, so there was a little bit of confusion towards the end on how they were doing some prayers, um, which kind of messed things up for them, but. Uh, I, that one, I definitely Waspu did the work. Um, actually, did the work both ways because after what Waspu did, um, he then immediately decided to try mind controlling Waspu as much as possible. Because um, what ended up happening was is that I had my pit dog kind of basically lure him out a little bit. Um, I just put it in a place to kind of suck up some space, and he's like, "Why did you put the pit dog there? I know you're baiting me." And I'm like, "I just put it here to take up space, but I mean, I could, there's a couple things I could do." And so he decided to go in and attack, um, killed the pit dog. And so I had Cade still on the off on the flank and then brought Cade up and I pulled him in closer and flipped him around. And then Waspu was right there and took a sh I unfortunately failed my flip. So you only could take one shot. Otherwise, I could have double shot him. Um, or I could have strafed into him. And I shot him in the back and did like eight. I double sh or I shot him in the back. I think I he was at that point success. I had to, I was one or two on what the target number was and i maxed out and so so at success that point, level six or something stupid like that because uh, you like surprised him and large yeah. base so medium range five surprised no close four. range i got him down to close range so fours 
I got it down to two but because you probably had ran earlier. Yeah, yeah so. it, it was like a two. It was one or a two, basically. <laughs> I only got them right. two. Oh, and so, so yeah, I and basically the damage roll at the end of the day was like eight points of damage. And because I pulled him closer, he was too far away to sacrifice it onto the Oni Slave. Got to it. which then his next activation ran the Oni Slave up, and then I took another shot with Wasapu at his back, and then we incinerated the Oni Slave because, <laughs> yeah, that was not going to end well. Um, so then I took so that that's basically so that one only fell to fell to Wasapu, at which point then Wasapu was pretty much controlled the whole game. Um, also, he controlled Kate at one point, which was actually a really here's a pro tip move to deal with Kate. If you control him because of how the states work, it's on his card. You can force him if you manage to carry the control over to next turn. Huh. Because he's your because he's technically your opponent's model, so he can force him he out of the, the, state the, to be the coin flip stage to go to the lose insignificant phase. Uh. Um, so that that that's I guess the pro gamer tip on how to deal with Cade. Um, <laughs> Got it. Okay. Odin Tantalo know. did good too. They went up against Raksha um, because he had Fearless, so it helped out. Um, it was still really close because Raksha hits. Like I didn't realize quite how hard Raksha hits. They're um, they're always they, they're going to hit hard. Yeah, but mm. base four, like I'm expecting like base two or base three, not base four. And I'm like, oh, I, they're, I they're, they're onies, right. dude. <laughs> they're onies. Point yeah. being is, is I was able to help deal with it. But one mm. of the things that my opponent had to do was, and he had even mentioned he hadn't really used the ability, he had to oni rage because when I threw out my insider informations or I was forcing people to get impetuous markers, the only way to give himself options was to start oni raging with people. So then that gave me an advantage because then a lot of those onies then were aggressive. So if I was going, if I was going first, if he didn't use them first, then I knew that there were going to be more dice and attack than defense, and I could, I could load up a little bit more and hit harder. Yeah, I, and and that that's an interesting thing. So that's another another sneaky silver moon kind of trick, at least for dealing with that. If you're going to be throwing things out to make somebody impetuous, then your opponent is figuring that they're going to have to go and make more models impetuous. I'm specifically talking Savage Wave, which then makes them aggressive, and you know, you get some benefits for Oni raging, but I think aggressive Berserk and aggressive is kind of rough. Berserk and aggressive is kind of rough. I mean, Berserk Berserk means you're going to be flying at somebody and trying to beat their face in, uh, or if they're going and aggressive. Aggressive is the one that that's the thing because if you can counter somebody's charge on you with someone who has reach or lightning strike, which would get let them strike first, then you know that they're going to be putting a majority of their dice into attack. So you could defend enough and then maybe throw something in attack. And then, again, Silvermoon has the ability to monkey with that single defense die or two defense die that uh, the Oni's throwing in. And they're, they're really banking on the tough and the fact that they have a stupid wounds. amount of wounds. Um, but two solid hits... And you take them out, so mm -hmm. that, that that that's interesting. So, so at the end of the game, what did you and I'll, I'll we were talking about this too. Um, at least the judges on your when we were when we were when we were talking about your table is, I figured that your game. I, I didn't know if uh, with the Temple Temple matchup, I didn't I I I, I wasn't sure what was going to happen there, especially because it was the Bastions of the Mountain. So. Uh, I, I didn't think anybody was going to get a 3-0 victory on uh, on the table one. But I, you know, the question is, was it going to be a 0-0 draw? Was it going to be a one nothing win? And then what was going to happen on table two, which you, which you were on, Jason? And when we were talking about it, because me and Brian were talking about and having played you, we were both of the mind that given that what you were up against, which was the Onis, and given that it was a depletion, which kind of plays in your favor a little bit, um... You had the advantage, but we didn't think you were going to be able to pull a three zero off. Uh, I two zero two one was was what we figured, and it, it could have gone either way. Mm -hmm. But uh, we didn't think you were going to get. We didn't figure anybody on that table was going to get the full points. Yeah, which I, I think uh, ended up that way. I think you yeah, the I got I got the two one on that one. It was the same thing. I lost the first victory point. I thought that I had snagged it because I I I'm not going to lie. I 
did a, I did a Hadakichi on my idol close because I thought that I had it, but I forgot that my opponent had had two different models in that turn, prey mm. on the middle idol. And at that point, I was like, oh, I am so screwed now because I just prayed on my back one. I mean, yeah, he paid it on the middle ones, but right. that other side is pretty open for him to just kind of go down there. And then if he prays on my side, I'm, I'm toast. I, there's nothing I can do. Okay. Um, fortunately, I was able to still sneak around one of my nunchuck dudes. Um, and I actually brought out, actually both my nunchuck dudes managed to get into the back lines, um, and started praying on, uh, my opponent's idol before they were, before they could deplete again. Mm -hmm. Um, which kind of led it to that. And again, um, I think my opponent got the scenarios confused on which ones they were. So then he started trying to pray on his own idols instead of mine, which oh. at that point that led to some confusion. I was like, no, this is what it's supposed to be. But I don't think that it quite clicked with him until like towards the very end when I was trying to explain to him mathematically, you're not going to be able to catch up to me at this point. Cause you're this is what needs to happen um his one sneaky move that he was going to try to do which was going to have wasapu prey on my idol because he had him controlled but because Cade was already removed everything it basically just forced me to waste Cade to basically attack wasapu so that way i could get rid of the control marker that but works that it, works for it, sure it ended up working out and i mean it actually worked <clears> out better that he got forced to the next phase because if he was insignificant okay that's fine i'll just move him around or i don't care about you and then pray okay so, so end of the day two two one victory so you had uh it was three wins one draw and and you came in second place yep with 27 points or something like that you had 27 Cody yeah had, i think i had 29 you had 31 no you had 31, 31. Yeah, you, 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 you walked yeah you walked jason, away and jason and the top, jason and the third place player had the same point total but jason had the better win loss win loss draw record at three at three three wins one draw where he had three wins one loss and the kicker being the loss was to me. against jason in the first round. So even the head to head would have matched up there. So had we gone to strength of schedule, Jason hey, actually had the highest strength of I, schedule. Yeah. I had the highest strength of schedules like almost by like, a long shot. Oh, uh, so that, that wouldn't have been an issue. So, you know, that, that was good. So now the big question, because the second and second and third place players are getting to make a card and we've kind of joked about this a little bit. So the, they're not making a figure, but they're having, some influence on an event card or an equipment card or something along those lines. So what, what are your thoughts for, uh, for doing an, a, 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 what, what, what everybody would like to know, what, what, what piece of event or enhancement or equipment is coming out? So, I mean, there's a couple silver moon stuff I've thought of, but that's been like kind of boring and like, Oh, okay. That sounds kind of cool. Traditional Yakuza stuff. The mm -hmm. more fun option is the episode of The Simpsons where they ride Mr. Burns' yacht into international waters and then they get to watch a monkey knife fight. So yes. a potential event card that's like something that has to do with a monkey knife fight or just a straight up curse knife of Furious George and there we then go. have it mess with like temple monk animal monks or something i don't know <laughs> anything but, with the uh, animal thing in it or show he yeah that that, so, that 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 that's about as much as i've done as far as concept so i'm, I'm running with it at this point so of course though since it's going to be the curse nice of furious george then that means only other animals can use it so that would be interesting and i know everybody was talking then like oh imagine a snake with a knife or imagine an eagle with a knife or imagine this other animal with a knife a silverback with a knife hooray it's kind of like a monkey <laughs> just what they need uh, all of them with knife. collar removes group trait there we go that's that that would be kind of fun yeah. so there's 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 potential there especially with with certain things or removes insignificant uh yeah. play it at some point to remove insignificant so you know congratulations on the second place that was it was again uh, no one got four straight victories and no one got and definitely no one got or yeah you even got cody you didn't get four victories oh i got your record no right i i got a my third round one. was one one yeah three oh and one um you know it should so have been two oh but you know misplays yeah yeah but you know it was it was overall it was a, it was a tough convention now you know great tournament all that stuff so now that we've got you know we've gone through our tournament i could take that you know i was done with it we could relax i didn't have a voice what else did you guys do at adepticon i know i played in one other event so my adepticon just kind of was roaming the vendor hall <laughs> um 
because family stuff happened. So I didn't end up signing up for anything else besides like the Bushido Grandmaster. Right. But, uh, family stuff. I mean, I went back, I think, on Sunday with you guys um, to kind of roam the hall and Do just pick up stronger. some stuff. So I didn't, I, at the time, Bushido was kind of the only thing I was planning on signing up for when I signed up for Adepticon. Okay. Now, Cody, you were there with me Saturday. What were you planning on doing Saturday that we ended up ditching your plans totally? <laughs> well, Saturday, I was actually going to help some people out play testing oh, the new right. Void Monks and whatnot. And then uh, I was kind of hanging you. around and there was an odd number for the Arena X tournament. So I was like, well, I kind of remember how to play this game. So if you need, <laughs> you know, Arena a Rex ringer, is, I'll, Rex I'll such fill a... in. Arena Rex is such a beer and pretzel game. I mean, there's not much to really remember. Oh, it was fun. And, well, you know, I, mean, I haven't played it since like 2018 or whatever. And I used whatever models Greg had left in his bag. And it was a pick and ban format. And people are looking at the list like, I don't know what to ban because I don't know what you have. I was like, that makes two of us. I just have Greg's leftover models. <laughs> And then I, I was, proceeded to win my first two games. I'm like, I swear, if I win this tournament with some <laughs> stupid list and I don't know what I'm doing, it's going to be terrible. Oh, then, I knew you weren't going to win. The, the 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 grand champion Arena Rex player, and God bless him, Matt Matt Swick was there, and he uh, he is just really good. Um, I, I've never had the luxury of playing him, so one of these days. He is good. Uh, he, mm. has, he has won. So 2019, was it 2019 I ran the Arena Rex? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because that's right. Bushido was on a Sunday. Uh, mm -hmm. So I played in the Batman tournament on Friday. I ran an Arena Rex on Friday. So 2019, he won the Thursday night, and I played in the two-headed Cerebus, so, or the three-headed Cerebus. Uh, I he won the Thursday night on 2019. He won my event on Friday, and then he won the big open Arena Rex. So he won all three Arena Rex on in 2019 and then coming back this year he won the two events that they ran because i wasn't running an arena rex event this year um and god bless uh god bless walker and frank because you know they they had they got to run those things after running a, you know it's just the two of them running the booth and then they got to run events at night so um yeah matt matt's good he's very good and we've had him at store we've had in-store tournaments and just play tournaments and and he's that that's his game he's got it down but it, arena rex if you haven't played it, it, it it's an absolute fun game gladiatorial fantastical gladiatorial combat if it, it it is just it it's the rules are very simple um but it's it, it has levels of depth to it with positioning and uh, management of resources of fatigue levels and things like that it, it, it really is quite challenging and enjoyable and the mechanic for it is absolutely nothing that you've played in any any miniature game that i can think of because there really is no round structure there's no yeah. oh in round two i killed so and so uh, no there, 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 there's no round it's yeah you, you kind of determine your own round with the clear turns and whatnot and, yeah that's about the only part that you know gives you a structure yeah like me forgetting that i still get my benefits and whatnot so i didn't my first two games never took a clear turn so i handicapped oh. myself oh, that's right you were you were playing kato weren't you so yeah you the Azili, so you could you were not getting yourself favor every turn and healing <laughs> no so i was like what am i doing like how are you guys getting clear turns and stuff i'm like, i don't know what i'm doing but it was a blast and i have assembled all of my arena rex since then so which, which i know we will be doing some arena rex because uh uh gaming eric has got his uh he's he's been painting his uh his uh Playmobil Coliseum and he's yeah, put little banners and stuff. Yeah, I was gonna and, say you uh, should have one, don't you, Cody? It's somewhere. It's, Hopefully. It's somewhere in the depths of his man cave. <laughs> My parents' man cave. <laughs> there you go. Close enough. But we'll uh we'll be playing that for sure, and so people could experience that game. It, it is a lot of fun. It will not be, it will not be, I will say it's not what I would call a lifestyle game. 40k is a lifestyle game, Bushido's kind of a lifestyle game. Um, this is the game that when you get tired of playing Bushido or you're in a highly stressful tournament and you want to blow off steam and drink and have fun, you go and get yourself in the Arena Rex tournament and you just chuck dice. Yeah. And they probably, I mean, GCT's prize support was fantastic, but 
the Red Republic guys, they like they're S tier for prize support, like especially yeah. for Adepticon. Like, oh yeah, those guys are stupid. Uh, and during the tournaments, they always do fun things like here, open all these chests, and you get stuff later on. Or the one I think it was twenty eighteen. It was whoever damaged the beast or something more yes. got a free beast from yep. the store, and so uh, yeah, so every, really cool and incentivizes you to kind of do stupid stuff instead of just beating your opponent. Yeah, so yeah, in the 2018 event, uh, and and they had it, so it was every, and that's every map that was playing. So every player, so I think they had 26 players. So that's uh, I can't remember my math. 15. 13, 13 mats. 13, yeah. Um, so 13 different boards each got to choose their own beast if they actually went for it. There are some people that actually just went for the scenario and didn't bother to try to get the model. But yeah, they they just would, if you did enough, the, the, essentially it had a long damage track and you really couldn't kill it. But whoever did the most damage to it at the end was the one who got the uh, the prize. And I mean, I've got I've got ancient, you know, antique Roman coins from some things because you'd have these crates that you could pop open. And yeah, it's it's cost me a few. I, it cost me my second round game. I was too busy trying to pop crates for for prizes than uh, than jump <laughs> up and kill my opponent. I, I didn't keep my my best figure for doing that. So yeah, I mean that that's that's what I did. That was I I I enjoyed it, even though I I, I Cody got off to a great start with figures that he didn't know. I actually had crafted my list and went out crappy. <laughs> losing my first two the first one i played against uh one of the, one of the guys that i've known who's played arena rex for years uh from michigan and those guys are really good players too so that was a tough matchup but he he just he edged me out on the scenario and i just i i i i was going to just try to wipe him out and then that failed horrifically and then i too late tried to scramble to try to get this scenario and it was just done for second round i was busy teaching which oh is gosh. typical for me. Well, and grabbing prizes, but I was busy teaching yeah. it. And the way the scenario worked, I had to be very aggressive uh, because he got the first scenario point. So, and then I was able to cancel it. He only got the one scenario point. And then I went and proceeded to decimate his force while teaching him, but I couldn't kill the last figure. And because I couldn't kill the last figure and it was on, so you have... Um, Oh, not circle. It's uh, basically it was an elevated thing. It was uh, we'll call it a circle of honor, which platform. is not what. It, yeah, it was a platform essentially. Um, I couldn't push him off to score a point, and I couldn't kill him, so he ended up winning, which was oh, fine. Okay. He, he he learned quite he learned quite a bit, and it was good. Then then from then on, I played. Uh, you know, and then I won my next three. Yeah. But the scenarios they do are the scenarios they do are they challenge you. They are hilarious, um, and I know I've done some where you have multiple pits open up, and then all of a sudden a tentacle beast comes out and tries to grab you and drag you into a pit. I mean, it, it, there's just a lot of fun and creative things that you can do with the game. So I can't, I can't, uh, I can't praise the game enough. If you're looking for a great side game for you and your friends with some gorgeous looking figures, I Beautiful strongly. Figures strongly suggest taking a look at arena rex that medusa figure that they do oh yeah. yeah the people who paint those things are absolutely insane that, that it's just gorgeous model even if you just buy two starter boxes so six models and you just throw them in your bag you don't even need to play on the arena you know you get mm -hmm. a couple pits from the starter boxes and yeah. it, you know even in between rounds at a tournament if you finish up early it's something you could easily just throw on the table real quick and run through, you know, some easy combat just as kind of a break. Oh, and you could do, and, and the things that you do are just ridiculous. Again, it's, it's, it doesn't sound like it's a game with depth, but it really is. Uh, but it's also a lot of fun, just yeah. filthy fun. And you're not busy thinking about, oh, how many points do I have to have? Oh, I've got two points extra here. No, it doesn't even work like that. The way it works, you say, okay, we're going to play a, a three card match. What does three cards mean? Essentially, a card represents a figure. The game is that balanced that you could just pick and choose your model. Some some figures have two cards that come with it, so that would take two cards of your of your three card force, or you just play one card of that. And again, it it, it is balanced that way, and so it's it's just 
it's a lot of fun. I love it. I, you know, so that, that was, that was our Saturday night. We, we did some shopping after that. I was beat. I needed to, I needed to decompress. And so thankfully Cody was with me to, to go and do that. Instead of playing more Bushido, he just went and smashed face. <laughs> and it was and good. And drink. <laughs> of course, drink. The honored pastime of Adepticon. And yep. then of course, you know, no, the honored pastime of Adepticon is the next thing that we'll try to talk about here briefly is shopping. Oh yeah. There's that too. So I'll go over what I bought really briefly. And then we'll see what you guys got. Cause I probably spent too much money. Uh, and, and I was someone's secret <laughs> shopper also. Well, Cody, you always spend too much. So that's, that's uh, this year. I, I was pretty, pretty <clears throat> hate this year. I was going to say you were responsible. Yeah. I was going to say Cody's pretty controlled, especially from years past. What'd you get? I don't know. I got so blackout drunk and this is what I think I got this. <laughs> I might have bought this. I don't know. It's a new game. Yeah, the entire Fallout line. The entire <laughs> <laughs> Judgment line. Judgment line. Yeah, that was the one. Well, that was we'll the thing, let, we'll talk about that. Uh, so I bought I, Monster Fight Club. I got uh, I got some stuff for Monster Fight Club. I got my tentacle, which is over there, which looks like my cat knocked over. That's weird. Uh, I also bought a bunch of their trees. I really do like the Monster Fight Club trees. I don't know how much I'll use them for Bushido for when we're taping because they kind of block camera view. But I have a game called Clash of Spears and coming up Clash of Katanas. Uh, they're historical. Uh, I'm looking forward to using them with that. And plus a whole bunch of other things. I can use them for Drowned Earth. Uh, just I love the Monster Fight Club terrain in general. Uh, yeah, it's really and nice. It's it's nice, and it, while it's a little pricey for what it is, it's industrial. It looks good, and I don't have to paint it. So much the better. Uh, so I bought that, and then for the upcoming Clash of Katanas, even though I got into the Kickstarter, and I'm going to get the basics of a starter army, I decided I wanted to buff, and I'm getting the Ming Chinese for that one. I'm getting. I have a bunch of Warlord Samurai for when we tried doing Test of Honor. Uh, I screwed up basing a whole bunch of my uh, Yari men, so I had to pitch them. So I bought a new box of uh, of, uh, of uh, Yari men for uh, from Warlord, so I could get those together. And of course, then I bought all my stuff from GCT. I got the two player starter. I got the Void guys, uh, and then I was secret shopper for somebody else, buying exactly the same thing: the two player <laughs> starter and the Void guys. So I doubled that. Um, you know, uh, there were a couple games that I thought I wanted to get into. I mean, I wanted to get some more stuff for Relic Blade, but they didn't have the Pack Yak, or they sold out by the time I got over there. Um, I wanted to take a look at uh, what was that one game we were looking at, Cody? The the Olympus one that looked kind of interesting. Oh, yeah, I walked by a couple times and yeah, it, it, like the demo table they had looked amazing, mm -hmm. but. And even some of the figures they had looked really cool. Like they had a bunch of random alligators and stupid mm -hmm. stuff like that. And so that really sparked my interest. But I watched a couple of people play and I was like, yeah, I'm looking for simple. <laughs> that, that's, that's, I think that's what it's kind of boiling down to with some of the things. So that was my shopping experience. Jason, what was it? I know your shopping list will be quick. Did, what, yeah, what did my, you get? <laughs> my shopping list was the new Silver Moon figure, Katsumi and Rin. So now I can actually be somewhat oh, competent yay. with my ninjas um and then i think i ended up getting sula from arena rex just that way i finished out my legio 13 collection which nice. was that was the only model i was missing okay um otherwise there wasn't a whole lot of other stuff i looked at some of the relic blade stuff and there wasn't anything that really jumped out to me or i didn't take too much of a good look at a lot of stuff because i know a lot of that stuff's customized so you got to really know what you're looking for no oh, i would figure you're just going to get more of the prawns the little fighting shrimp you can only take two of them, so... Oh, I thought you could take more than two. I, I'd have to double check. We haven't played Relic Blade in a yeah, while. Yeah, we haven't played in a while. Yeah, I also still need, to, I still need to paint all my main heroes, so... That's true. That's what kind of stopped me from buying more, too. So I'm kind of <laughs> glad we went back there on Sunday and everything was sold out. That was helpful. <laughs> Cody, what, what did you end up getting, aside from the Bushido stuff? So I showed up, beelined it to GCT for the Bushido stuff. Yes. Um, then... I don't think I bought anything else that day. I don't remember. I kind of kept it short and to the point. So I did mm -hmm. that. I picked up a couple of Arena Rex figures, you know, just as a thank you for allowing me to play in the tournament and whatnot and just them being awesome because I wasn't pre registered and mm -hmm. wanted to support them. And then uh, I picked up some Monument Hobbies paints. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. And then some new brush soap because that soap is amazing. Really? If you have like old crappy brushes and whatnot that are just mm -hmm. caked full of paint, just put that on there and it like just takes it right out. Okay. Because I usually use the Viejo paint cleaner and then their, uh, their brush restorer. Uh, but I'll have to check out that monument stuff for sure. Yeah. It's kind of like a all in one. I it think they got it at the this. Brush and oh, okay. Everything. It's, it's, uh, it's really good and it's pretty cheap too. I think it's six, seven bucks for a tin and, I mean, the only reason I bought a new one was because my old one kind of dried out and it's still <laughs> usable, but right. I was like, might as well. Get some more while it's there. Sure, sure. Yeah. I, I want to say, I think Todd and them are, I think the guys at Grognards bought like the rest of their display or whatever that was yeah, left over. Yeah, they bought the display rack. Yeah, okay. but they might, they might have sold out of that because I know there were a few color, there were a few gaps in the in that, but I'll have to check yeah. that out when I'm there again. Um, yeah. Yeah, the only other thing that I, I'm kicking myself for was that hobby mat that tt combat was selling oh they had yeah the art markings and stuff i completely yep. forgot about that and then i'm like dang it because i don't want to pay overseas shipping, overseas shipping. For it. <laughs> yeah yep yeah, i don't i don't blame you but uh our, our so for more for locals who are watching um if you want tt combat stuff uh gragnards is able to get stuff so that might help us avoid the extra shipping costs but we'll find out about that so yeah, I will say for, for Adepticon, it was great to be back, minus getting mm -hmm. the coronavirus. The um, Adepticon special. Yes, the Adepticon special, which I got in, in spades. Um, yeah, the, only, the, the only thing I'll say that was down for me, a downer for me, is I didn't get to go upstairs to check out some of the things that were happening there. I didn't get to play as much as I would like, especially on Thursday. Uh, I was actually signed up for an event on Thursday. Passed on that. Did play a little practice game for some, but with somebody for uh, Bushido on Thursday night. But I, I really do like playing a lot of games. But I was really stressed out about running the the tournament on Friday. Um, so you know, six and one half dozen the other. Uh, I will also say, while there were a lot of vendors at the vendor hall, I would say there was notable absences too. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, FFG could. wasn't there, which even though they ran their tournaments and stuff like that, they did not have a booth. Um, the guys from uh, uh, the guys who do Blood and Plunder weren't there. I was hoping that they were going to be there. Um, so there, there were there were quite cool, a few. Was Cool Mini there? Yeah, Cool uh, Mini was there because actually oh, okay. the big surprise they actually had Crystal Brush there. Oh, that's weird because I so, figured Mini wasn't going to be there, especially no. since they since they rebranded from Crystal Brush or Crystal Brush, and so they're not doing it. This <clears throat> well, that was so that was because Adepticon partnered up with going back to their origins, and the Golden Demon has come back to the United States, uh, <laughs> and it's at Adepticon, and because of that, they couldn't do they could, and of course, uh, Jeez, Games Gold, Workshop Golden De Golden Demon is exclusively Games Workshop stuff. But what was surprising, and the only reason I know it is because I've been watching other people's videos for the wrap-ups of their Adepticon, is Cool Mini was there. Uh, when you came into the hall, they were on. They were at the beginning of the beginning of the row, all the way on the left. Oh, okay. Um, and then there were mm -hmm. cases along there, which I didn't bother to look at. But that was the Crystal Brush. Now oh. I don't think they were giving away a huge prize again, mm -hmm. but you know I saw some of the pictures. There were a lot of chibi miniatures that people painted in there, and a, I like the Crystal Brush because. You're going to get your 40Ks. You're going to get your AOS figures in there. But because Crystal Brush is not specific, you get to see a whole plethora of the whole miniature world. And I really, I appreciate that more. Not that the guy, not that the stuff for Golden Demon, because we checked out Golden Demon on Sunday. Mm -hmm. It's not, it, it's not that it isn't nice and it's great stuff, but I like seeing more than just, you know, grim, dark space Marines and orcs and, right. and whatnot. Um, so, but again, uh, so aside from not there, they're not being more vendors there, which was probably a benefit for me and keeping me from spending money. <laughs> uh, I had to restrain myself from picking up Carnival. Thankfully, Cody, you remind me that you have everything. So <laughs> basically, <laughs> so I don't have to buy anything right now. Um, it was, it was a good con. It was a good con. And I'm looking forward to, uh, I'm looking forward to next year. Ooh, who's that? No Carnival, Carnival. Carnival, I figure that coming to a screen near you sometime soon. Um, so next, guys, Pain. <coughs> oh, nice, nice. So next Steve year, I'm Pain hoping. Uh, there you go. Next year, I'm hoping. I, 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 
don't know if I'll be running uh, the Bushido tournament or if, or if I'll let Art take it over again and just kind of assist him if he needs the help. Um, I have kind of committed myself somewhat to be running Clash of Spears, Clash of Katana's event. Uh, so I'm going to have to get off the stick and do that. That's what I'm kind of doing now is painting my Clash of Spears stuff. Uh, and I might try to run... I might not play anything next year, and I'm just going to be running events. I might run an Arena Rex again event on Friday again. Don't know. That's just thinking out loud. Uh, I'm sure you two will be back at Adepticon, you know, schedules allowing. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> definitely going to, you know, try and be the back-to-back -back champ for Bushido. Um, well, we'll see if Judgment ever arrives because i love that game that's one of the best games i've ever played plus now it's on hex grid so it's even better i do like that yeah that's I, nice yeah it, uh, it, it takes the guesswork out of stuff and, and the yeah. terrain they built for it is really neat because it's hex grid terrain so yeah when you're in something it, it work it's beautiful looks nice yeah it, it'll just help too with you know any game we play even bushido am mm -hmm. i in or am i out uh, you know and you're always like, I want you to be out, but at the same time, it's hard. And then by the time you actually get the measuring sticks, you bun bungle everything. And it's like, I mean, I, I even had in the Arena X tournament, I'm like, just roll a die, you know, one, two, three, you're in, four, five, six, you're out. Because I was like, that way it's whatever. <laughs> right. You know, if you're going for that level of precision, and I know people are like, oh, it's going to be so easy. It's not. It, it, it really isn't, isn't you know, because you could you could put something off a fraction of a millimeter just putting your steppers around, and that's well, going to alter right. it. And you know, even, so you know, like I have a custom acrylic movement set, and it's calibrated. It's like within you know, mm -hmm. I think zero point one millimeters or something. It, it's pretty close to being right on, but not everybody's is, or right. you know, mine no, might be point one over while someone's point zero one under well and you're using you're using acrylic somebody could be using cardboard cardboard could be perfectly spot on but you get warpage on it so that's going to mess with the measurements right. there's just so much that that could go go wrong with it um that 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 throws that off so as i've always said if you're going to be of a really competitive mindset Play it on a grid. Make your game on a grid. Make your game on a hex grid or whatever. If you want to have arcs and stuff like that, that will take the absolute questioning of it out. And that's why I was very impressed when we when we went over there to kind of take a look at Judgment to see what they were doing, is they took that to heart because they mm. it's essentially a very competitive game from what you've been telling me. Absolutely. Um, and by making it hex grid, there's no arguing about Oh, you're in or you're out. No, you're one hex away, so you're in or you're yeah. out because you're unless five you hexes out. Count. <laughs> yeah, unless you can't count, which that may be a failing of mine. Uh, you know, and 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 the the beauty of it is, is again, they could still make it look pretty because when they had those terrain hexes, I mean, it's a wooded terrain. It, you're, you're in the woods. Well, I actually put my figure on the hex, and right around the rim of the hex, they had bushes or bamboo or whatever it was so you knew you were in the terrain oh so, kind of like hero quest yeah like like not not old hero quest uh what was that one game that used to use the hexes hero scape oh hero scape thank you that's what Sorry. it was very much like hero scape but hero scape was very basic art this is very very pretty i mean very yeah, nice it's beautiful it's, it's beautiful, and, and again, I haven't played the game, but from what I've saw, and I don't know if it's going to necessarily be something that I like. I'm not into Moabs too much. so, But I'll give it a whirl. It looked gorgeous. And the, the models are not 54 millimeters, but a little no, smaller. they're 32 now. They're oh, not as intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not as intimidating, probably not as expensive. Well, and it, it's nice that you don't need a you know, Battle Foam 1540 XL on wheels just to carry your judgment stuff yes. to the con. Yeah. Now no. it's like, oh, I can use my little Malifaux bag or, you know. A standard that, bag, pretty much. That's yeah. a nice thing with that game, too, is small model count. You know, I'll have everything, but you, you go to a tournament and it's like seven models and pick and ban, you play five. And yeah. that set list. So that's kind of nice, too, because, you know, for Adepticon, I can bring Bushido, Arena Rex, Judgment, whatever, all in one bag. Mm -hmm. And that's it. It's you not know. like 40K where you have to rent a truck to bring your display board, your army, and 
Yeah. <laughs> and everything. And the elusive Adepticon dice finally showed up. Oh, oh very nice. I like for, them. For our podcast listeners, Cody's showing off his awesome dice. Yeah, they're black and blue swirl. I've rolled them. They roll a lot of ones for me, so they'll be great for other people. Uh, well, or you find a game that rolling ones is a good. Yeah, so you're just going to play Risk with them. Yeah. <laughs> don't play don't play Arena Rex with them. Don't play Bushido with, Bushido them. with them. I don't know. We'll, yeah. we'll find a game where rolling rolling low is good. That's, that's no, just the make game my own. Us. We'll just figure it out. And then just I'll roll fives own. and sixes. We'll just make our own game. It'll have hookers and cocaine. You know what? Forget about the game. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> Sounds great. Uh, on that thought... Uh, I think that's probably a good place for us to wrap up. So again, we we have a lot of things going on. We have a lot of games that we're looking forward to playing, and we got a lot apparently to talk about because we went way over what I thought we would do tonight. Uh, so again, this is kind of uh, we're still in our early stages of our podcast and whatnot. We hope you enjoy our discussions. If you did, or you you feel strongly about something, throw a comment down for us. We appreciate the comments. Like to hear what you think. Like to know if you'd like to hear more stuff. In general about it do you want to hear more about bushido do you want to hear tactics you want to hear more about arena rex be happy to talk about that oh, is there yeah. a game that that you you're interested in we may have it already who knows so just kind of you know leave some comments we would appreciate those and, and if you do like what we're doing give us a like that, that lets us know that hey you know what keep up the good work and as always you know subscribe so that way you can kind of get that first notification when we come out with our uh with our stuff so Thanks for listening. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. We are, again, we've gone a little long tonight, so uh, we covered a lot of ground and we had a lot of, a lot of talk about uh, our Adepticon experiences, our swags, and other games. So we hope you appreciate that. So thanks again, and you know what? Have a great day or evening, wherever you may be. Ça